by factoring some more, which is what the video was about on Friday. Um, but I also want to take you to a graphing one real quick. So let's go to the y equals of our calculator. And I'm going to clear off what's already in there, if you already have something there. So everybody go to the y equals of your calculator, and let's type in this equation that we see right here. Now, as long as it says equals zero or equals y, we're ready to go. As long as your equation says equals zero or equals y, you're either ready to factor, you're ready to graph, you're ready to do whatever. So I'm going to type in x squared plus 6x minus 7. x squared plus 6x minus 7. I don't type in the equals 0. That's like the equals y part, which is what this says over here, equals y. So as long as they say equals 0 or equals y, you're ready to factor, graph, solve. Everybody got it in? Okay, do you see how it's wanting me to fill in this table? Oh, yeah. So how do I get to a table? Graph. Second graph. Okay, I'm going to arrow up until I get to where my x is negative 8. And when I get to where my x is a negative 8, what's the y? 9. 9, okay. And then when x is negative 6, negative 7. When x is negative 4, negative 15. When x is negative 3, negative 16. When x is negative 2, negative 15. When x is 0, negative 7. And when x is 2, 9. Okay, so I'm going to plot those points, or as many of them as I can. Okay, so first I'm going to plot negative 8, 9. So that would take me which way? Left 8 and up 9, because it's a positive 9. So left 8 and up 9. Okay, negative 6, negative 7, that would be left 6, and it would be down 7. Bless you. Negative 4, negative 15, this isn't going to fit, but I'm going to go left 4, and I'm just going to kind of come down here somewhere where it looks like a negative 15. I'm just guessing. Negative 3, negative 16 would be down just a little bit farther. Negative 2, negative 15, and I'm just guessing here. They are rocking out. 0, negative 7, I just go down to the negative 7. Love you. And 2, 9, right 2, and up 9. Okay. And then I just want to connect it with a smooth graph. What shape is this? It's a U-shaped graph. It's a parabola. This is a quadratic because of the x squared. It's quadratic. Not that crude. No, you didn't hear what you said. Oh, no, I wasn't talking about that. No, I wasn't talking about that. Crude means it's like Okay, so this is a quadratic because of the x squared. It is a, a parabola. It's a U-shaped graph. Okay, let's solve by factoring. This is what I talked about on Friday. So in order to factor, they need to say equals zero before we start. Does it say equals zero? Yes. Okay, so I'm ready to start. So if I look, I just need everybody to stop talking. I need you to stop talking and I need to make sure you're paying attention because not very many of you in here did that assignment from Friday. And I wasn't in here to monitor you, so I don't know who paid attention to the video, who did not pay attention to the video. So I need to make sure that you guys know how to do this. Okay? As long as it says equals zero, we're ready to graph, we're ready to factor, we're ready to do whatever. If I look up there at my um, little chart, the first thing I always look for is a GCF. Does this right here have a GCF? It does not. Does it have two terms or three? Three terms. So I'm going to do A times C rooftop. What's the A? A, a 1. So what do you get if you take A times C? Negative 7. And what do you want your numbers to add to be? 6. What two numbers do that? 
Negative 7 and 1. No, and 7 and negative one. A 7 and a negative 1. Mm -hmm. And because of the 1 in front, I can shortcut, right? Mm -hmm. So if I shortcut, what would it look like? X plus 7. And? X plus okay, so that's what we were doing when we were factoring. Now the solving part, you just bring down the equals 0, and you do what we did on that 1 through 7 on the first worksheet. You take the first factor, set it equal to zero. Take the second factor, set it equal to zero. So if I take this first factor, x plus 7, and set it equal to zero, what would I get if I solved that? x equals negative 7, because you would subtract 7 from both sides. Okay, if I take the other factor, x minus 1, and set that one equal to zero, what would you get if you solved that? x equals a positive 1. Now look at those answers for a second and look at the graph. Do you notice anything about these two answers versus the picture of our graph? Oh, that's the, the they're on the x. They're the x-intercepts, they're the roots, they're the solutions. Those guys right there. So we're going to learn several ways to solve quadratics. Do you see that these two equations are the same? Okay, so if I solve by factoring, I factor. I set my factors equal to zero, and then those are the answers I get. If I solve by graphing, then wherever the graph touches the x-axis, those are your solutions. So as of right now, if you were taking the math EOC test, and it asks you to solve this, you could either solve by factoring, or you could put it in your calculator and see where it touches the x-axis. Now, if it's my test, and I ask you to solve by factoring, I'll want to actually see this. But if it's like the math EOC and it just gives you some quadratic and it asks you to solve that quadratic, right now you have two ways of doing it, either by factoring or by graphing, and wherever it touches the x-axis, those are the same solutions that you get when you solve it by factoring. Okay, so you're going to learn another method um, tomorrow for solving quadratics, but right now you know two methods. So if you ever want to solve a quadratic, you can do it however, you know, as easy as for you, like when the math star comes around. Uh-huh. So, the reason that we do it, is it because it's the x, it's the x's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right here, this is where your x is a 1, and right here, this is where your x is a negative 7, which is what we got here. Okay, so these three down here, are they already factored? These three down here, they're already factored, they're already set equal to 0, so I'm just going to solve. So I take my first factor, x, and I set it equal to 0. Is that done? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's done. Then I take my second factor, x minus 9, and set it equal to 0. What would I get? X equals, x equals 9. Those are my two answers, 0 and 9. Okay, let's try to solve these in our head. In the second problem, these are already factored. What would you get if you set the first factor equal to 0? x equals positive 1. What would you get if you set the second factor? Uh-huh, x equals negative 1. There they are. Okay. Looking at this one, what do you think you'd get if you set 2y plus 6 equal to 0? <coughs> yeah, y equals negative 3. And I'm just going to show it if um, you can't do it in your head. First, you'd get rid of the positive 6 by subtracting it. And if you subtract the 6, that would give you 2y is negative 6. And then you would divide both sides by 2. And if you divide both sides by 2, you do get negative 3. But I would love it if you could solve that in your head. It just takes less room, less, less paper. Um, so now we're allowed to do it already? Yes. What do you get if you solve 3y minus 4? Mm -hmm. Y equals 4 over 3. Does anybody actually need me to um, like work it out and show you all the steps? Okay, so as long as the problems are factored, Problem. then it's really easy. We just have to get them factored. Okay, I'm passing you on another one. What? With what? Math. 
Like, like, well, like, you do it. What if you can rotate in my house? Then you either your teacher's on this side of the building or you can on the There's a list down there that has, like, the geography teachers on it, and I think if it's not on there, then you can. I don't even go to your house. Wait, let me go to the establishment. I'm just going to act like I don't know where you are. No, I'm not. I already left. What? That doesn't work for me. Okay, hang on. Before you start crumpling papers, that just drives me crazy. Let's go ahead and just look at um, a couple on the back here. Well, I really need to teach this really quick. This is the one we were just doing where we drew the parabola. The paper where we drew the parabola. Flip it over. I know I gave you a new one, and, and we're gonna we're gonna go to the new one in just a second. Okay, on the paper with the parabola, if you flip it over, this section here says solve each equation, and then it says give your answer as a solution set. Now I just want you guys to know, for testing purposes only, do you see how these are quadratics? Yes. They all say x squared, r squared. If they're quadratics and they say equals zero, equals zero, equals zero, or equals y, you could just graph them and see where they touch the x-axis. Wherever they touch the x-axis, those are the solutions. But I want to practice solving by factoring because that's what um, you need to be uh, working on right now. But for testing purposes, you could just graph these and see where they touch the x-axis. Okay? All right, so as long as they say equals zero or equals y, we're ready to go. First thing I look for when I'm factoring is a what? Yes. Does this have one? Yes. What is it? 4x. 4x. Okay, then I build the parentheses behind it. Mm -hmm. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. And 4x times what is a negative? A negative 3. Okay, and then if I happen to cover up my GCF uh, and look to see if I can actually factor, the, factor this, um, does this right here have a GCF? And then when it's got two terms, I check to see if it's a difference of squares. Is this a difference of squares? Okay, so I'm done factoring. I'm going to bring down my equals zero. And now I'm going to set these factors equal to zero and solve them. So my first factor is 4x. Can you do it in your head? What do you get if you set 4x equal to zero? Okay, so hang on. You, you get zero, right? Is everybody okay with that? So you get x equals zero. And then what do you get if you set 2x minus 3 equal to zero? 3 over 2, which is which is 1 and a half, but I would just write it as 3 over 2. Now, when it says give your answer as a solution set, it means to make these, oh, that was awful, to make these solution set symbols, and then you just put the two numbers inside the solution set. Just put I'll do that. That's okay. I just wanted you to understand. Okay, so on number 5, since it says equals 0, I'm ready to go. So if I look at the left-hand side, first thing I always look for is a what? GCF. Do I have a GCF here? No. Okay, two terms or three? Three. Three terms, A times C rooftop, what's the A? Negative 20. Okay, so the A is a 1, and A times C is negative 20. What do you want them to add to be? Negative 8. Negative 8. Okay, what two numbers do that? Uh, oh, my gosh. Four. Uh-huh, a negative 10 and a positive 2. And some of you, you know, will be better at that than others. Yes, since it's the one in front, it's a shortcut. So x minus 10 and x plus 2. And then all I have to do is set these two factors equal to 0. So if I set x minus 10 equal to 0, what would I get? A positive 10. And if I set x plus 2 equal to 0? x equals negative 2. And if I'm supposed to write it as a solution set... Then it'd be 10 and negative 2 inside um, the solution set symbols. How do you draw those? Like apple. What? Apple. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. My teacher in school was very concerned about it, and I would have to take my paper, and I'd put it like on top of the, the printed, printed ones on a textbook, and I'd trace it. Because if they didn't look perfect, we lost points. If we ever drew anything, we had to use a, a ruler or a straight edge of some sort. Okay, I want to see if you can do six real quick, and then we're going to go to that other page I gave you. I would have failed. Was... Well, you just did it. I know. I mean, I'm just saying. It's just like you didn't want to do it, but you just did it. 
Yeah, you didn't want to, you know, you didn't want to fail. Tyler, have you done my number six? No, I mean, I don't know what goes into pool. Oh, I know what it is. Good job. I don't really care. Every time I've used a different letter, you told me, now is this an X or is this an X? Well, yeah, because I'm trying to be precise with you, but I wouldn't count off if you used the wrong letter. But, but there's a big reason for that, Sydney, because when we do the long method and you were using like X's and R's in there, then that's confusing. So that's why I wanted to make sure you always use all the same letters. So that's why I was saying that. Like this one, you wouldn't get confused because it's the shortcut. Okay, so did everybody end up doing A times C rooftop? Oh, yeah. What'd you get for your A times your, uh, your C? Negative 16. Well, no, 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 the A times the C. Oh. Negative 48, and you wanted them to add to be <laughs> negative 13. Which ones do that? Negative Should be the negative. Okay, negative 16 and positive 3. Because of the one in front, I can shortcut. So R minus 16, R plus 3. All I have to do is solve. So what do you get if you set R minus 16 equal to 0? Positive 16, and this one gives you, yes, a negative 3. And then I can just put them in the, the set symbols. I don't know. I put the negative 3 first, but it really doesn't matter. No, because I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay, we're going to go to this next one that I handed you. Like I said, you're going to have a lot of papers today. Okay, I showed you in my video on Friday how to do this as well. But do you notice that these do not say equal zero? Okay, so except for, yeah, number four, or well, three and four. So in my video on Friday, I told you they need to say equals zero, and then I just need to make sure that you know that they also could say equals y. If they said equals y, that means they're ready to graph. It also means they're ready to solve. So as long as they say equals zero or equals y, you're good to go. Oh, crud. <laughs> okay. My, the arm on my chair just came up. Have you ever cussed on a video accidentally? Um, no. I was no, I haven't done it, but I was very nervous when I initially took this job because I was told that we we made videos for all of our classes. So in my mind, I was thinking I was going to have to make videos for like every single class every single day, and I thought, oh my god, I am going to get fired because I tend to have uh, well, I I tend to say things sometimes that I shouldn't say, and I really haven't done that as much in this class as I have in some other classes. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get fired. But then um, I record you guys typically, or I'll record you know my first period class, and I'm well behaved, and then I can be naughty after. Oh. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, the other thing I did not say on Friday, I want you guys to hear me say, is I want my x squared to be positive. So, um, always have it positive. So, I want the x squared to always be a positive number. I don't ever want it to be a negative x squared. So, I always want the x squared to be positive. So in saying that, in number one, since my x squared is positive over here, I'm going to leave him alone. I do not want to move him because I want to keep him positive always. So this is the guy I want to move. I want to make this one go away. 
So how could I make this minus 22x go away? Add 22x. And I wrote it like this on Friday because I wanted room to work on my other problems. Do you agree that negative 22x plus 22x is 0? Okay, so that's now gone. I now have my equal 0, which is what I wanted to have happen. On the left-hand side, I can't add these because one's an x squared and one's an x, so I can't add them. So I need to make sure that the left side is in order. And what I mean by that is I need the x squared first, then the x, and then the constant. So the left-hand side needs to be in order with <coughs> highest exponent to lowest. So how would I rewrite this? If I want to keep it in order. 33x squared plus 22. Okay. 33x squared plus 22x. Okay. Once it says equals zero, we're ready to solve, and we're going to solve by factoring. So what's the first thing I always look for? GCF. Do I have one? Mm -hmm. What is it? That would be... It's 11. 11. It's 11x. X, because they both... Hang on, hang on, Tyler, hang on. Wait till I ask the question. I, I go slow for a reason. So 11x, and then here you can answer my question. Tyler, 11x times what makes 33x squared? 3x. 11x times what makes 22x? 2. And then I can't do anything with that. There's no GCF. That's not a difference of squares. So I'm going to bring down my equal 0, and I'm going to solve. Okay. What do you get if you set 11x equal to 0 and solve that? Negative 11. No. Mm -mm. Set zero. You'd, oh, yeah. you'd get 0. If I set 11x equal to 0, I would divide both sides by 11, and 0 divided by anything is always a 0. So I'd get a 0. So I showed my work there, but if you don't want to show your work there, that's okay. What do you get if you set 3x plus 2 equal to 0? A negative 2 thirds. Because you would subtract the 2 and then divide by 3? Okay. And I'm not writing it as a solution set, but I've showed you how to write it as a solution set. So I don't care if you write it like this or if you write it as a solution set. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Number 2. Does it say equal 0? No. no. I need to make that happen. And do you see how my n squared is positive over here? So I'm going to leave the left side alone. I want to move this side. So how do I move a minus 18? Okay, so I'm going to add 18 to both sides. And then that way, the negative 18 plus 18 is 0. That's what I wanted to have happen. How do I put the left side in order? 9 squared plus 18. N2 minus 9n plus 18. Good. N squared minus 9n plus 18. And then I go through and I try to factor and I solve it from there. So let's just go ahead and do it. First thing I look for is a GCF. Does it have a GCF? No. Nope. Next thing I look for, two or three terms? Three, three terms. So I'm going to do A times C rooftop. So what do you get if you take your A times your C? Three and negative C. No, no, no. It wasn't the question. A times C makes? 18. 18. I want them to add to be? Negative nine. negative nine. Okay, Jacob, what are the numbers? Nothing. You know them. No, you can tell me. I said three and negative six, but that's not it. Negative six, number three. Oh, yeah. What is it? Negative, yeah. six, negative, mm -hmm. negative 6 and a positive 3. <coughs> no, that's not it. Okay, sorry. And then because of the 1 in front, I can shortcut. So what would it look like? Okay, so n minus 6 and n minus 3. And then I just bring down the equal 0. And so what do you get if you set n minus 6 equal to 0? A positive 6, what do you get if you set n minus 3 equal to 0? Positive 3. So basically, it's what we were doing before, factoring, and then you just set your factors equal to 0. Okay, we haven't done an, a, lo a long one in a while, so um, let's go ahead and look at it. Um, as long as there's not like the one in front, like this one, the 3x plus 2, it wasn't just the opposite. Okay, looking at number 3. Is it ready to go? Yes. It says equals 0, so it's ready to go. First thing I look for is a GCF. Do I have one? No. Nope. Okay, second thing I look for, two terms or three? Three. Three, so here I go, A times C rooftop. What do you get when you take your A times your C? Negative 10. What do you want them to add to be? Negative 2. 
But, three. Okay, and what two numbers do that? Negative two. Negative mm-hmm. A positive five and a negative two. But this one, I can't shortcut. Okay, when it has the one in front, I can shortcut. If it doesn't, I can't. So this is when I recopy the 5x squared. Instead of using the 3x in the middle, what do I write instead? Plus 5x. Plus 5x. And then? Minus 2x. Minus 2x. And then I drop down the? The minus 2? Okay. Okay, then this is where I start looking for GCFs. What is the GCF out of the first two pieces? 5x, build your parentheses behind it. 5x times what gives it back? X plus 1. Because 5x times, well, I, I covered that up for a reason, so I'll move it in just a second. 5x times x made the 5x squared, and 5x times 1 made 5x. Okay, when I look for the GCF out of the back two, what's the greatest thing that goes into both of those? 2. two. What do you know has got to be in the parentheses? X plus 1. What kind of 2 will it be? Negative. Negative 2. Okay. And then what goes in one set of parentheses? X plus 1. What goes in the other set? 5 minus 2. 5X minus 2. Okay. So the factoring's done. Now I'm ready to solve it. Once the factoring's done, we just set them equal to 0 and solve. What do you get if you set X plus 1 equal to 0? X equals negative 1. Negative 1. And what do you get if you set 5X minus 2 equal to 0? A positive two fifths. Okay, I've got another paper coming. Oh my gosh. What? Come on. Are we doing all these homies? No, we're doing all these homies. Yeah, it's 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 all these homies.